So Rob, how does the Vestas on the island fit into the international operations? Uh, we are uh, a big part of the technology division of Vestas. So we're just heading for 200 people on the Alawite, uh, nearly all engineers and senior technicians. Uh, and that's out of a population of about 1,400 engineers worldwide. And Vestas globally employs over 20,000. Uh, so we're 200 out of 20,000 is the other way of looking at it. So what area of R&D do you work on here? So we're primarily blades. We stretch into other rotor subjects, uh, but 80% of what we do is focused on the blade. Wind energy is uh, by far the most mature of all the renewables. And the more countries that invest in a technology, the more mature it gets. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's had 25 years of many countries investing. And probably, order of magnitude, 100 billion has gone into wind energy over that time. And it's made it very, very cost competitive. Wind energy, in terms of its efficiency, it's a mute point. It, when we put a wind turbine on a hill and it's, say, a two megawatt wind turbine, it's designed to only be at full power equivalent of about 30% of the time because the wind doesn't always blow. But we allow for that fully in the way we design it and the way we build the commercial business case. Wind energy's opposition is almost completely due to the visual impact. And I understand that, quite frankly. You won't be surprised to know my view on it. Uh, but I absolutely respect people who, uh, who consider them a visual intrusion in beautiful, uh, beautiful landscapes. Uh, and my challenge to those people is, uh, if you want to turn your lights on and look after this planet, wind energy actually is about the only commercially viable resource in the next 20 years that's going to make a serious impact. Wind energy is the lowest, uh, the most efficient form of renewable energies. It's the one most globally available and the one that is available uh, to grow in a large volume now. So is the UK doing enough to develop wind power? The UK is doing great things now for offshore. And, and it's beginning to reap the rewards of being a first mover in offshore. Uh, and, you know, I'm very proud of what UK Limited has achieved. And, you know, politically, we have to thank the last government for making some very brave decisions. The journey on onshore wind energy is a great deal more mixed. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, no, we have not done enough, not by far. And uh, a kilowatt hour of electricity on an onshore site is about one third of the cost for an offshore site. So by choosing offshore, it's great, but by saying no to the resource onshore, we're saying no to a very, very cost-effective resource. And I think people are waking up to that. And how about the island? What's the position here? From a personal perspective, uh, I am determined to see wind turbines on this island. Uh, and I also understand I have to be a patient man for that. Uh, we will see them. And uh, and again, uh, I quite accept I might be uh, accused of bias, but in the conversations I have with people on the island, uh, the vast majority accept that we need to have them and that it has to be part of the solution. It's only part of the solution, but it has to be part. How good a location is it technically for wind? The hilltops of uh, the Isle of Wight are fabulous wind resources, absolutely fabulous wind resources. Uh, and it is absolutely technically capable to produce all our electricity needs uh, from wind. I would not dream of going that far for, for practical reasons, but it absolutely, from a, uh, from a theoretical perspective, could be. Isn't, uh, I mean, solar, you know, sunshine is also globally available. Yes. Um, it's very predictable, it's very regular. Um, yes. Why is that not such a, a um, well-supported renewable technology? Well, it's got to be very, solar photovoltaics, solar for electricity production, is incredibly well-supported and supported by some huge businesses. Uh, and I think it's a fantastic technology. Uh, but it comes from a very, very high cost base because of the technology that goes into making the photovoltaic cells. And that cost base is coming down, probably at the rate of 5% per year. Uh, but it's at a very, very high level. Uh, and we're talking, you know, five or 10 times the cost of a kilowatt hour generated from a wind turbine.
wind is much more cost effective at the macro level and quite frankly is not cost effective for the majority of rooftop applications. So where does tidal energy fit into the equation? All the other marine technologies uh, are a lot more immature. They are perhaps where wind was 20 years ago. And technically they are capable of producing great, great sources of energy, especially tidal, especially tidal. And we should indeed be investing in that. The, there's some dilemmas with it. Uh, I'd say firstly on the plus side, tidal energy is incredibly predictable and because of the density of water, a very small unit can generate a great deal of power. So fundamentally, from fundamental engineering principles, it's great. When it comes to tidal energy, the UK has the vast majority of the resource. So developing tidal energy would be down to UK Limited almost alone. So it's a commercial issue right now, more than a, more than a technical one. Now you used to have a manufacturing plant on the island. Was there any sense that the government's uh, lack of commitment or the island's lack of commitment to, to wind uh, power impact at all on the closure of that facility? The market for wind turbines in the UK was inadequate primarily because onshore wind farms were not consented. And that consenting is primarily down to local councils to choose, and that's where the problem lies, is consenting of onshore wind farms. Uh, and uh, the Isle of Wight did not help because they weren't leading, the, for, a, for an island that had 600 jobs, they were absolutely not leading the way and being a beacon of what they wanted other councils to do. Could one wind farm on the Isle of Wight change it? No. But could they have helped in the leadership of other local planners, etc.? Yes, they could have done a great deal more. I mean, that's a bit ironic in the, in the context of the Eco Island Initiative, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's at the heart of an awful lot of initiatives that Eco Island uh, is an umbrella for, is the choices that we all have to make in our lives to have a sustainable world aren't easy. None of them. If they were easy, we'd all be doing it. Uh, and they all require a change of behaviour, a change of attitude and a change of thought. What's the position at the moment with the proposals for wind farms on the island? Uh, one is uh, going through appeal uh, and we will absolutely be uh, supporting that process of trying to get the decision overturned. Uh, I thought that uh, actually the process on the island was was very interesting in terms of uh, the debate that it caused and actually that a number of members of the planning committee were in favour of it more than more than I've ever had and that's why I say I'm patient. It, it will keep going in the right direction. Given your area of business, I, I assume you're very focused on your own company footprint. How do you deal with that? A bit like the Eco Island slogan, we have our slogan with investors and we call it as green as it gets. And we start with our vision statement and then we have a journey to meet up to that vision statement. Uh, and I'm very proud of the journey we're taking and it's a journey. Uh, we have invested massively in video conferencing equipment. That means that I get on a plane a lot less and my 200 engineers and colleagues get on planes a lot less. And it's very clever stuff. Uh, the other piece we're doing is we're building a new technology centre on the Isle of Wight and we're putting £50 million into that technology centre uh, and we are making that building just about as green as we possibly economically can. We intend to move into the new technology centre about 12 months from now, uh, about eight, April, April 2011, uh, and we are absolutely saying to our workforce, it might be a low energy building, but it's also up to how we use it uh, and how we get there uh, and so on. And we do the same with our food. So we absolutely have, if it's available on the island, we will buy it on the island regardless, uh, trying to reduce our footprint.